Welcome to Fine Fires YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about breaking news. Theme park guidelines for California have been released. If you're not already following me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at the caliber. Please subscribe, hit the like button, fire it up. I'm the main host, Mondo. Let's do this. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the guidelines that have just been released for California theme parks. And this is involving Knott's, Universal Studios Hollywood, and Disneyland. So in this live stream, they provided a couple screenshots or just, uh, they provided a couple slides that gave the guidelines. And I'll show them on the screen right now so you guys can see them. So the first thing is, they did provide guidelines for smaller theme parks uh, per se. Uh, what defines a smaller theme park is uh, overall capacity has to be fewer than 15,000 based on the design or capacity. So that's what defines a smaller theme park. But for smaller theme parks, they are able to open in orange. Orange tier is the third tier. And that's 1 to 3.9 daily new cases of Rona per 100,000. I know I'm gonna give a lot of information out, but this information, uh, I'll try to put it as clear as possible. So that's what's applied for uh, orange tier on small theme parks. They're only gonna be able to open with a limited capacity of 25% or 500, whichever is fewer. So most likely for these theme parks that are smaller, it's probably gonna be that 500 because uh, if theme parks are being considered 15,000 as the maximum, 25%, that, that's way over 500. So I'm guessing 500 is going to be where their capacity is going to be reached. But the other thing for small theme parks, they may only open outdoor attractions. Ticket sales are limited to visitors only in the same county. So if you're outside of the county of whatever small theme park you're trying to go to, you're not able to visit it. I, I'm not sure how they're gonna implement that, but once we get more information, we'll definitely provide that. It might be through an online screening, we'll, we'll see. Uh, let's go into the, boat, the, the one that we're waiting for and we've all been waiting for, which is the Disneyland guidelines, the bigger theme park guidelines. All theme parks may resume operation in tier four, which is minimal. How do you actually get into tier four? The way you get into tier four is there has to be less than one daily new case per 100,000 people in the county. So one positive case per 100,000 people in the county. Uh, and it says positivity rate has to go down to 2% or less for a county to go into a yellow tier. And that's the fourth stage of this whole tier system that was created which seems so far away from the tier that we're currently in, which is uh, we're in red tier, uh, which is the second tier for Orange County. Uh, the first, let me just give you a breakdown of the tiers. It's tier one is purple, tier two is red, tier three is orange, and tier four is yellow, okay? So for all the big theme parks, they're gonna open up with a limited capacity of 25% in tier four. Whenever tier four is in tier four, once we get there, they're finally gonna be able to open with a 25% capacity. Uh, all theme parks that do open in tier four will have to implement reservation system and screen guests for symptoms in advance. Face coverings are going to be mandatory throughout the park unless you're eating or drinking. And uh, some other things too, uh, there will be no indoor queuing allowed for any attraction or ride. For indoor attractions and rides, they will develop an outdoor queuing system prior to entry into the attraction's indoor operation. Or most likely, virtual queuing is going to be uh done for these rides there's some other things i wanted to talk about as well uh, for the capacity in regards to the dining and drinking areas uh, they're going to limit these establishments inside the theme parks to only 25 percent as well so if uh, a certain restaurant only could hold 100 people only 25 people are going to be allowed in that restaurant period 
These are some guidelines that we've all been waiting for, but these are not the guidelines that we were all expecting. Uh, the, I'll have, every, I'll have uh, some links to some of this information in the description of this video so you guys yourself can go over it as well. Uh, thankfully, the guidelines have been provided. Uh, I do not know when Orange County or LA County is going to be able to go into tier four, which is yellow. Uh, I, it's it's going to be a challenge. I, I, I'm, ju I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked. Uh, one thing too, 25% uh, capacity for Disneyland, it's going to be somewhere around the range of maybe 12 to 15,000 people. So when the park does open, that's what we can expect uh, in regards to 25% capacity. Uh, we all kind of had the idea that uh, reservations were going to be implemented, but now that reservations are mandatory, uh, we're going to see Knott's create a new system, Universal Studios create a new system. I'm not sure how it's going to work out for like SeaWorld or Legoland uh, or just all the other theme parks uh, here in California that are considered a larger theme park. So uh, some of the things that I've been preaching lately on my YouTube channel is to call Disneyland to get your annual pass extended uh, for however long you're eligible for and choose option two. Uh, I, can, I can't tell you how more important it is right now to do that because uh, who knows how they're going to work this reservation system uh, down the line and how ticket sales are going to happen at a limited capacity. So having an annual pass during these times whenever the parks reopen, it's going to be like gold. Having an annual pass is going to be so like so valuable i don't know how else to say it uh because it's gonna suck to have to buy tickets for individual days down the line uh whenever the parks reopen if you don't have an annual pass uh things are getting very interesting for disneyland uh since they're the only ones that kind of have or uh, not the only ones but they've provided their options of option one option two for their annual pass uh, the other one that has provided an update for annual pass was Knott's Berry Farm, where they're just going to provide the full year of 2021. Uh, if you had an annual pass right now, they provided you a full year of next year, uh, which was awesome. And they also allowed their benefits to be transferred over, uh, like their meal plan, dining, parking, all those benefits would just transfer over to 2021, which thank you, Knott's Berry Farm. One of the biggest blessings we've had theme park wise. Uh, and for Universal Studios, we do not have an update of how annual passes are going to be handled uh, in regards to extending them, refunding. I, I have no idea. We haven't heard any information just yet, uh, but I will definitely cover that once we get that info. Uh, but for now, theme parks are not going to be opening until yellow tier. Who knows when that is? Uh, it's, it's hard to just imagine when the county could actually go into yellow tier. Uh, if we really had to take a guess, it's gonna be sometime long in the future into 2021. Uh, for all the hopes and dreams that we had of the parks opening anytime soon in November, December, uh, I, I'm starting to really say it's just not likely and not gonna happen most, most, uh, most certainly under the yellow guidelines. It's just, I just don't see it happening. But uh, I will be planning to do a reaction video to everything that's going on here. I just wanted to get all this information out there for whoever is searching for it. Thank you guys for watching Fine Fires YouTube. Appreciate all the support, but we are firing it down, firing it down. The Cali Bay is calling it a day. I'm the main host, Mondo. Ah.